And there have been some changes. And one of those changes is it has not shifted further to the north. It has shifted a little bit further to the south. And now it's predicted to make landfall not as a Cat 3, but possibly as a Cat 4 hurricane. So here are the latest stats. 120 mile an hour winds, that has not changed. The pressure has been very steadily going down. It hasn't dropped like a rock. It's been dropping very steadily. We continue to probably see that overnight tonight until tomorrow morning. Notice this right here is when it gets close to landfall. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m., Cat 4, winds right around 130 miles an hour. And look at where the center of the line is and also obviously pay attention to the whole cone right here. The center of the line was around Venice earlier. Now it's closer to around the Englewood uh, Northport area. And it comes on shore as probably a Cat 4 borderline Cat 3 hurricane, but that would obviously cause a lot of damage in and around, obviously, the eye wall, but really as is, is, is far north as 30, 40 miles north of that would be pretty bad damage and 30, 40 miles further south than that. That's how big the hurricane force winds are. You notice as it goes inland, here we are in the middle of the night, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, 2 a.m. Winds are still close to 80 miles an hour as it moves inland, across our inland counties, eastern parts of Manatee County, around Mayaka Head, Mayaka City, uh, places like Wachula, Arcadia, Bartow, uh, Lakeland, northeast towards Haines City, Davenport. And you can see that it does eventually move right near the Orlando area, uh, and it becomes a tropical storm. But also notice that the cone is still across Pinellas County, still across Hillsborough County. There's still a chance that this could shift. And, you know, these storms always have some surprises. Although it doesn't seem likely that it's going to shift this far north, it's not out of the realm of possibilities because it is still in the cone. This could still be wrong by as much as, let's say, 40 miles either way. So just keep that in mind. So that is the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. You can see the storm right here has a very clear eye thunderstorms now this is important take a look at what's happening on the west side watch that blow up of storms as that kind of goes around the whole circle of the eye wall it'll probably energize this system and increase its intensity and you can see where the warmest waters are in the gulf of mexico take a look at the gulf and look at where the warmer, warmest waters are, right off Key West, Florida Bay, off Naples, Cape Coral. This storm is going to be moving in that direction. That's why it is forecast to be a Cat 4 before it makes landfall. Could weaken a teeny bit right when it gets to land. We'll see about that. This is the simulated satellite to give you an idea of what the storm's going to look like as it approaches shore. And one thing I want to show you is look at how the northwest side of the system is the dominant part of the system in terms of rainfall. These colors indicating big thunderstorms. This is where the heaviest rain is going to be on the northwest side of the system as it tracks in that location right there, as it tracks in that direction. So the heaviest rain won't be on the southeast side. It'll likely be on the northwest side, uh, which is not all that typical for tropical systems. But that means the Bay Area will be in some of the heaviest rain. And I'll end with this, the storm surge. We were worried for days about a worst case scenario where the storm comes right up into Tampa Bay or just north of that. Well, that would have pushed water into the bay. But as it stands right now, water should be pushed out. Now, of course, there's still going to be some storm surge flooding here in parts of Tampa Bay, especially closer to the Pinellas side. But water is pushed onshore in places like Boca Grande, Captiva, and Port Charlotte. We're really concerned about that area getting the storm surge. All right, I want to bring meteorologist Rebecca Barry in. It's not just storm surge. It's not just heavy rain that's the problem. It's also the fact that we are going to see, uh, you know, a lot of gusty winds. And this wind could really be devastating, especially near the eye wall. And I do think we're going to experience those heavier winds for longer than we might expect with a typical tropical system just because it's moving so slowly. So let's break down the timing and the intensity of the winds that we're going to see. And so taking a look at what we're seeing out there right now, the yellow is tropical storm force winds, which is 39 miles per hour above. The severe winds are 60 miles per hour above. That's the orange. And that's when you can't drive over bridges anymore. That's when it's not good to be on the road. Now the hurricane force winds is where the real damage starts and that's 74 mile per hour winds. And so this is all moving north through the Gulf and closer to the Fort Myers Naples area and so early Wednesday morning nearly the entire area is experiencing tropical storm force winds but we're just now starting to see the damaging winds move into Fort Myers and so as we make our way through the morning by mid morning now we're getting damaging winds in Sarasota and Manatee counties mainly Sarasota County just starting to edge into the southern tip of Manatee County there this is by 10 15 on Wednesday now we're seeing hurricane force winds in Fort Myers mid morning late morning on Wednesday tomorrow
tomorrow afternoon. Everyone's seeing tropical storm force winds, those damaging winds that will close the skyway, it'll close the Gandhi bridges. That happens by about three o'clock on Wednesday afternoon while we're starting to see very damaging hurricane force winds, category four storm hurricane force winds in Sarasota County all the way down to Fort Myers. That will continue to track northward very, very slowly across our area. It is going to take 12 hours for this system to move from landfall to halfway through Hillsborough and Polk County, and that's just half time. It's still a category one storm, and we're only halfway through it, and it's continuing to move slowly. Now we'll see those hurricane force winds starting to shrink over Polk County, and just severe winds stretching over most of our areas along into the north of I-4. So let's talk about the gusts that you could see and the timing of that. Tonight, the gusts are garden variety storm gusts, 20 to 30 miles per hour within the heaviest of the storms and so we wake up to some gusts around 50 miles per hour in Sarasota by the time the lunch hour rolls around we're seeing some gusts around 40 miles per hour across most of our zones and our southern coastal zones in that 60 mile per hour range and those spread up across our area with the highest gusts in Sarasota and Manatee counties gusts of upwards of 100 miles per hour right there along the coastline where the eye wall pushes by by and so we'll continue to see those gusts through Wednesday and even into Thursday making it very difficult to start to get things back to to normal after the storm.